Hello and welcome back to the Air Armoury. I'm JRH and today I'm looking at the Gamo Expromatic 2000 Air Rifle. So Gamo, or to give them their full name, Industrious El Gamo, are one of the biggest manufacturers of air guns and related accessories in Europe, and they're based in Barcelona in Spain. Now the company was originally founded in 1889 as a manufacturer of lead products, although the company as we know it today, uh, with its current name, was established in the late 1950s, and they began making air guns in 1961. Uh, these air guns were first introduced to the UK in I believe the late 1960s or early 1970s and were marketed under the name El Gamo rather than just Gamo as they use today although a lot of these earlier guns were sold in the UK under the ASI brand name uh, but that's a subject for a different video. This model is the Expomatic 2000. Now I've seen references to the Expomatic, the Expomatic S, the Expo 2000, the Expomatic 2000 and the Expomatic 2100. Now there may be a few subtle differences between those models but as far as I can tell they're all largely the same gun uh, with this one being marked Expomatic 2000. So it was made in the I think 1980s and 1990s and is a repeating version of the single shot Gamo Expo. So let's take a closer look at the Gamo Expomatic 2000 air rifle. The Expomatic 2000 is a spring piston brake barrel air rifle. It's 41 inches or 103.5 centimetres long and weighs just under 6.1 pounds or 2.75 kilograms. It has a 17.5 inch or 44.5 centimetre long rifled barrel and it's in 177 calibre which was the uh, only calibre it was made in and the barrel along with all the other metal parts are all glued steel. Uh, I think it has the exact same stock as the Expo which is a chunky hardwood sporter style stock. Uh, it's finished in quite a dark stain and lacquer. Now in terms of shape it has quite sharp lines and corners on the fore end which I'm not normally a fan of but I do actually quite like the look of this stock. It then has a raised cheek piece on the left hand side uh, which would technically make it a right handed gun but the cheek piece isn't too prominent so I don't think a left handed shooter would have too much of a problem with it and it also has some grooves cut along the length of the fore end to add grip but also give it a somewhat distinctive look um, and the gun is then finished off with black plastic hardware in the form of a trigger guard end cap and butt plate. So I'm now going to remove the stock to show you what's going on underneath. Looking at the action you can see it has a two-piece pivoting cocking link with a rather thin flimsy looking transfer bar which takes us back towards the trigger. Now although Gamo guns are made in Spain this is actually a stock Chinese made trigger unit which can be found on a number of guns made by Gamo, SMK and Crossman. Now it's all steel uh, the majority of which is stamped. The trigger is single stage uh, it can be adjusted using this screw behind the trigger blade uh, but my experience of these trigger units is that the adjustment doesn't seem to make a great deal of difference. Now it's not exactly a match winning trigger but it's not too bad, uh, I've certainly used a lot worse. Now the Expomatic 2000 has a manual safety uh, located in front of the trigger which comes back to you block the trigger to prevent it being pulled and the safety sits in front of the trigger within the trigger guard so it's nicely positioned to flick off with your trigger finger and it's also marked with F and S on the trigger guard for fire and safe. 
looking at the sights, the front sight is a plastic ramp which is press fit onto the end of the barrel which has a plastic blade moulded into the top of it and then a metal removable protective hood over it. The rear sight is a metal flat spring with a plastic body towards the back of it, the whole thing being secured onto the barrel by this uh, screw. Uh, it's adjustable for elevation and windage using these wheels which are nice and clearly numbered. Uh, the open sights are very standard for gamma guns at the time and the sight picture is okay but not great. Now if you want to mount a scope it does have a standard 11mm dovetail rail for doing so uh, but you might have a bit of trouble finding mounts to fit as standard ones won't fit you'd, uh, because of the magazine you'd have to remove the magazine and load pellets directly into the barrel uh, as per a usual brake barrel. Now looking at the markings if I take the magazine off on the top we have Gamo made in Spain and then there's also a very small Gamo logo stamped into the top of the rear sight and on the left hand side of the barrel block we have the model Expomatic 2000 the calibre Cal 4.5 177 and the serial number this one being 1737048 uh, but unfortunately I don't have any information on the serial number range or how, uh, how many were made and then lastly is that F and S on the trigger guard for fire and safe which I showed you earlier on and then whilst not strictly part of the gun this one does retain its original gamo quality inspection sticker obviously the big selling point of this gun is the repeating mechanism so I think it's worth taking the time to have a good look at that now first of all I'm going to take it apart and show you how it works and then I'll do some shooting with it and talk a bit about the positives and negatives of it so despite what it might look like, this system can't just be tacked onto a standard Expo as there are some modifications to the gun and to see that properly I'm first going to remove the rear sight. The gun is fed by this tube magazine on the top which holds 24 pellets comfortably or 25 at a push or 28 lead balls at 29 at a push. Uh, so to load it you first break the barrel slightly and then pull the magazine backwards and up to release it from the gun. You then use this tab to pull back this um, spring pressured follower and lock it into the slot in the side of the magazine. You can then uh, slide all your pellets down into it and Gamo did actually sell packs of magazine refills for this which were essentially a pack of four or five plastic tubes full of pellets which you could then just slide in in one go. You then slot this into the hole in the back of the end cap and push it back and down it into the slot at the front and this is actually held tightly in place as there's a spring inside the end cap there. You then gently undo this and release this under spring pressure to uh, put tension and pressure on the pellets. So to show you how it works as a repeater I'm going to take this section off which is just held in with a couple of screws. The loading assembly is essentially just the uh, tube magazine, this plastic housing and this free floating metal block. So when the gun is closed it's held in this position like this. Uh, the magazine which is sits in that hole can't feed as it's being uh, prevented by that metal surface and this hole is drop down in line between the barrel and the transfer port and this metal piece although it's free floating can't move up or down as it's held in place uh, below by the barrel catch plunger and above by this stopping piece. Now this stopping piece is held on in some grooves cut into the end of the barrel and held with a retaining screw in the top and that will sit below the rear sight. When you break the barrel open the stopping piece moves up and out of the way and then the barrel catch plunger pushes on this angled surface to push this metal block up which puts the hole in that in line with the uh, end of the magazine so the next pellet under spring pressure from this uh, follower in the magazine is pushed into this metal block and then when you close the barrel again the stopping piece 
pushes the metal block back down into the position it started in, which again cuts off the magazine. But now the pellet is held in this hole between the barrel and the transfer port, ready to be fired. Um, so this system allows you to break the barrel as many times as you have pellets in the magazine without having to manually reload a new pellet into the gun. So I'm now going to load it up and take some shots with it and I'm going to be using these Gamo lead balls. I'll, I'll explain why that is in a minute. So there you've seen the repeating mechanism in action. Now it's great fun to use, albeit it knackers your arm slightly as it doesn't give you the respite you get when loading a pellet normally. And the cutout in the magazine gives a very nice clear indicator of how many pellets you've got left. Uh, unfortunately though, it doesn't however function flawlessly. Uh, first of all, the spring pressure uh, and follower pushing the pellets against each other and then pushing them through the repeating mechanism does tend to deform the skirts of some of the pellets which noti uh, noticeably affects accuracy even at short ranges. And the second and probably bigger problem is that the repeating mechanism uh, relies on the relatively light spring in the tube magazine to seat the pellets properly in that metal transfer block. Uh, I found that at least once in every magazine a pellet tends to get cut in half at the waist which subsequently jams the magazine and causes a failure to feed until the magazine is removed and the blockage is cleared. I have here some pellets that has happened to and been cut in half and these four were all from just two or three um, magazine fulls. Um, I find it tends to happen more towards the end of the magazine when there isn't as much spring pressure on the pellets and I found that lead balls actually work far better in this kind of repeating system. Um, the reason being that the magazine holds more of them, uh, the balls get deformed less and feed much more reliably. 
and whilst you do lose some accuracy using lead balls instead of Diablo pellets, uh, with a repeating gun like this the trade-off is well worth it. I'm now going to test the accuracy. I'm going to fire 10 shots at one of these 14 centimeter square targets at a distance of around 12 meters and I'm going to be using these 8.2 grain BSA Pylarm number one pellets but I'll be loading them one at a time directly into the barrel instead of using the tube magazine. Here I have my target. Now the overall group isn't great, but five of the 10 pellets were either in or touching this inner black section, which isn't too bad. Uh, it's about what I was expecting, to be honest, uh, and it's fine for plinking. So I'm now going to test the power by firing, uh, firing another 10 of those 8.2 grain BSA Pylarm number one pellets over the chronograph. Here I have my chronograph test sheet and I've already done all of my calculations. Now with those 8.2 grain BSA Pylum number one pellets I got an average velocity of 545.75 feet per second with a spread of 118.3 feet per second, the highest being 596 feet per second and the lowest being 477.7 feet per second. So using an average of 445.75 feet per second, that gives me a power of 5.42 foot-pounds. So the Expomatic 2000 is a mid-power gun, coming in at just under half the legal limit in England, uh, which is more than enough power for plinking. Now when they were new, the velocity was supposed to be around uh, 575 to 600 feet per second, so this one is pretty close to where it should be. Now the only thing that concerns me slightly, however, is the spread of 118.3 feet per second. Uh, there really shouldn't be that much variation over a string of 10 shots. Uh, it's probably also worth mentioning here that the gun requires a fair bit of force to cock, which is probably made worse by the fact that it's also having to operate the repeating system, but the cocking force does seem disproportionate to its mid-range power output. So there you've seen the Gamo Expomatic 2000 air rifle. Now the rifle itself is very representative of gamo guns at the time. Uh, it's a perfectly serviceable plinking and informal target shooting rifle, uh, but really what you're buying this gun for is the repeating mechanism. Now despite its drawbacks, uh, for me the positives do outweigh the negatives, and I think John Walter in his book, The Air Gun Book, sums it up very nicely when he says uh, experiments suggest that the system can damage the pellets during its cycle with a measurable deterioration of accuracy and velocity, but the guns are fast to cock and load and great fun to use. So if you want to get yourself um, an Expo or an Expomatic 2000, they are available on the second hand market and the going rate seems to be around £100. So thanks for watching, I hope you found the video interesting. If so, be sure to like, comment and subscribe to the Air Armoury and until next time, keep your arms in the air.